Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for, for coming to our panel. Uh, it is, uh, we are going to present uh, Red Planea, uh, some of the projects that we have been making in the last uh, two years. And uh, well, I'm especially happy to, to introduce this panel because it's, uh, well, I mean, um, here in the context of ISEA, which is a very important conference on uh, art, technology, science, and society connections, because uh, I'm really, I've been really, I've been always really interested in uh, in this topic. Yesterday I was here presenting another personal uh, project, but in this case, uh, this is a, a panel in which we are going to present some uh, exploration that we are doing in how to translate all these ideas, this contemporary thinking that is being activated here in ISEA, how we can translate it to the educational context on the primary and the secondary school. For me and for the uh, persons who, who are here on the table with me, uh, my, my colleagues from, from Planea, uh, is a kind of um, essential question, no? Uh, to think and to uh, explore new ways of uh, transforming the, the school, uh, introducing uh, uh, critical thinking about uh, technology and science and this uh, transdisciplinary approach to knowledge. So, uh, well, I will, I will uh, introduce uh, the person in the panel is uh, Susana Tesconi, that is a, a professor at the WOC, is an artist, and she has a long uh, experience on designing and, and creating uh, educational resources for, for technology education for kids. Alfredo Miralles, which is an artist uh, based in Madrid, which has been collaborating with the uh, Planea Network. Uh, Felipe Gil, which is member of, uh, of CEMOS, one of the, I will explain later, but the structure of the network, but he's member of CEMOS, uh, which, which, which is one of the nodes of uh, mediation uh, of uh, Planea Network. And Diego Dia, which is artist and professor at the, uh, Jaume Primer University in, in Castellón and has been also collaborating designing a project for, for a school. Um, I'm Clara Bog, I'm an artist, a professor at the Polytechnic University in Valencia. Um, and, um, I'm also part of uh, Planea Network as coordinator of the uh, Valencia node of the network. So briefly, I will explain you what is this about Planea. Probably this uh, map is a little bit too complex, but I hope you can uh, understand a little bit. Planea Network is a project uh, that um, is happening now in uh, three regions of Spain, Madrid, Andalusia, and uh, Valencia, Comunidad Valenciana. We, uh, and it's a, a network promoted by Fundación Daniel Inina Caraso. Uh, that uh, invite us, uh, no? several agents that were dealing with this kind of uh, uh, art education, uh, no? that we were worried about uh, these issues, invite us to explore and to think and to prototype how uh, art, uh, art uh, formats, art methodologies, art thinking could be uh, uh, implemented in the, in the schools. So we designed a network which is uh, uh, composed of uh, 15 uh, uh, schools, uh, we call it pilot center, no, a prototype, five uh, schools in each, in each territory. And uh, along five years, we will be prototyping uh, new ways of uh, introducing the artistic practice uh, into the school as a, uh, uh, not as an instrument to create art, not as a, um, a, a knowledge of uh, art history, but as a way of thinking on, and create uh, knowledge in relation with the other subjects that are being 
activated at the school as math, music, uh, social, no, science, uh, all the knowledge that are happening at the uh, school. So here in this map, uh, well, we are working, I, I will explain you briefly, but we are working with uh, artist residents at the school. Uh, we have several projects where we invite artists to develop projects in collaboration with, uh, with the schools, with the teacher, with the student at the different levels. We uh, have also other kind of project where we develop kits something we call kits, and it's a set of resources that we send to the school to be activated in an in a autonomous way by the teacher, no? by the professor with their student. So artists design these kits uh, to, to be replicated at the schools. Uh, we are also um, working with other formats as um, seminars and teachers' uh, courses no? to, to share with them what artists are doing and thinking and what kind of methodologies they are using to create and develop their ideas. Uh, and we are doing all this with uh, a process of mediation where there are three nodes, uh, Pedagogías Invisibles in Madrid, CEMOS 98 in Andalucía, and uh, the Consorcio de Museos de la Comunidad Valenciana in, uh, in Valencia, where we, uh, well, through this uh, agents, no? through this uh, uh, mediator, we help the schools to uh, integrate all these possibilities and to think together, no? because we don't give a receipt, re uh, we don't give instruction to the school, but we try to co-create these new ways of uh, of uh, creating knowledge at the school. So for the moment, we are 15 uh, uh, schools. We are in, uh, starting the fourth year of the network. And we are having some kind of answer in this prototyping that later we will try to um, uh, develop uh, further. No? And um, to, to uh, we are also creating ways of sharing what we are doing so it can be implemented in other schools and the network will grow. So one of the ways we do for, well, also we work under the uh, collaborator center. So we have 15 pilots, but we have more than 60 uh, centers that are collaborating somehow. So some of the projects we do with the, our our main center, my main schools, later we, we share with other schools so they can also uh, test and share and uh, explore. So one of the ways we found to, to uh, share all this knowledge, all these ideas is a, a resource center and uh, at the website of Planea, we created a huge uh, database where, where we share all the projects that we have uh, been doing uh, not just as a memory of what happened at the school, but uh, uh, as an open source methodology, we explain how we do it, what kind of results, and how uh, any teacher that is interested, any schools, could uh, try to implement this at, uh, at his school. We share all of this uh, in a... In a uh, open source manner and we are kind of always, uh, how to say, willing to, to, to share with any teacher or a school or a co a community, no? <laughs> a school community that want to, to explore this project. We share through our resource Centro uh, de Recursos. I will try, yeah, here is the website, Planea. It's kind of difficult. Ah, vale. El, well, it's kind of difficult, but uh, <laughs> just want to show you the resource. Oh, no llegaré. Well, at the website, you can find more information about uh, Planea Network, which are the schools which we are working with, who are the artists, uh, who are the mediators that are involved in the project, but in this 
uh, resource center, you will find uh, organize uh, a lot of, uh, of these projects no? that explain with all details uh, how uh, we made, which materials are we using, how you can get and create these materials, what kind of problem you can find and how some tips to solve them, no? And, um, yeah. Ahora me vengo aquí. I think I will share everything. I will show you everything with this, no? This kind of, so it's a, we share as PDF or every resource has a different format, uh, depending on, on, on what kind of, uh, of project we are uh, sharing. One uh, other, other, other thing we are doing to, to share the knowledge we are getting at this network is ANIDA. ANIDA is a journal uh, for educational resources where we invite through an open call other artists, teacher, uh, researcher that are interested in this connection between art practice, contemporary art practice and contemporary thinking uh, in the schools. We invite them to, to share with us their resource, how, how they did, what, what kind of projects are they doing. So uh, this is this, uh, we already, we, we start with the ANIDA, the journal last year, and now we are gonna, um, present in 6th of July, the se second number of ANIDA. And this number is sp specifically focused on uh, the use of, uh, the critical use of technologies in a creative way at the school centers. So uh, we have received a huge number of proposal and through a peer review process, we have selected uh, well, a, a nice number of resources that together with the project that we are doing at the network, uh, the, our centers, no? the, the, the schools where we are working, will be, will, will, uh, will be uh, a nice compilation and uh, we hope a useful tool for uh, teachers and uh, schools to use. So I will, uh, well, this is Anida. I will um, give uh, the, the turn to Susana because we invite Susana as a, a expert in uh, technology, uh, critical use of technology uh, in schools. We invite her to uh, be the guest editor of this number of, uh, of Anida and uh, help us to define what kind of resource are we looking for, no? uh, what kind of resource we would like to, to be shared and to be implemented at the schools. Thank you very much, Clara, and thank you to everyone to be here after the, 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 the coffee break, so <laughs> thank you for me. And I'd like to, um, to share some, I'll be synthetic because my, my voice is, is gone. And uh, also, I, after several years, almost 20 years of experience in implementing educational progr program and projects involving technology, um, I, am, I am in now in a moment where I prefer to reflect on the practices then uh, show uh, a lot of projects and flashy circuits stuff. Because uh, we know that mm, the implementation of, technolo te of technology at school has been uh, not so much critical in several contexts. Uh, I, I will not enter now and here in, on this topic, but uh, just to, to to contextualize my practice, uh, I think it's very important to, to think uh, why we do what we do, for who, with whom, and how. So in order to do that, it's very important to have some idea uh, very, very clear about technology, about art, about uh, education, about educational relationships and creating meaningful and uh, deep um, educational experiences. So, and right now in my, in my, in my research, I'm at, the, at this point, I want to think about things, and I don't want to go 
um, uh, following um, technological trends or tendencies and, and stop and, and think about it and reflect with others. Because I think in the last 15 years we have been in a kind of a run behind the uh, last device or um, protocol or technology or uh, 3D printer or um, tablet or whatever. And now we need to, to think about why we do this, what we do. And we need to reflect about what is, how, how we build knowledge together with students and teacher and how we can create um, pedagogical knowledge that can be extracted from pra educational practices in collaboration with uh, artists, designers, and activists, and all the uh, educational community. And I think we, we can do, we can act this way if we have some idea clear. And I, I've listed some, some concepts that I, I I feel like pillars of my practice and practice of a lot of other professional in the field. And we need to, to have clear that art is a way of knowledge. It's a way of uh, understanding the world. It's not a decoration. It's not something that is formal or nice. It has to be transformative. It's a way of building knowledge and building culture. At the same way, science is also culture. It's not just uh, working on facts with, exact, with data and um, following a specific methodology. Science is an interpretation also in a part, and, and it's a part of culture, and we need to integrate this, this, this part in, in all the other cult cultural resources. And we have to, to, to be very clear about technology. Technology is a thing, is a, is a medium, is not a discipline. So when I, I'm very critical about STEAM education, for example, I'm very critical about the, the acronym, because I think if you, if you have engineering in, in the acronym, why you have to put technology? There is a medium, there is a tool, so it's not the, so we need to be clear about that. And technology is never neutral. So when you implement something in a school, you have to be aware of the political repercussion of the market situation and all the power dynamic you can br bring up when you, when you do it. And pedagogy has to go, to go first, has to be the guide of not, we don't have to go uh, to, to follow technological tendencies and adapt our pedagogies to that. I think it had to be exactly the opposite. And epistemolo epistemological pluralism, it's a way to remember that and to uh, use all the opportunities that all, all this environment that are very rich in technology, in art, in people, in, and social issues uh, to be um, to, to create more possibility for the kids to understand the, the complexity that surrounds them from every point of view. So, uh, from that, how we do it? We need methodology, we need a mindset, we need uh, some to think about approaches. And from the more critical environments who are working in technology right now, we can extract, uh, we can uh, use and remix um, practices like hacking and invention, for example. Uh, we can integrate it with other mindsets in all the different forms that has been uh, presented. And we need also to connect that with academic practices because we need to um, have um, research methodology that can recollect all these insights and practices and um, make them part of the academic 
uh, real knowledge, the official one, no? Because, no, well, this is a very nice project, but it's just practice, you know, the reality is different, we have no numbers, so participatory action research is an actual way to, to uh, capitalize, to, to, to construct academic knowledge uh, starting from educational practices or artistic practices. And in, in, in this line also uh, we need to be sustainable and aware that we don't need to change devices or invent the wheel all over again, but we can reuse and, recy and recycle material we, we already have. We can work with low-fi technology, we can invent technology, we can disassemble technology and, 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 and build it again. So, and also with the technology we, we produce, we need to be open uh, to be, uh, to, sh to share what we do, because if not, it's, 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 very, it's very difficult to, um, to build a, a critical scene inside the educational system that is very hierarchical. Hierarchical, I don't know if I, I was the pronunciation of that word. <laughs> so, um, and, that, well, and finally, the teaching attitude we need, I think, is to promote to foster discovery versus instruction. And this is a, a, a deep change in the um, belief system of, the, of a lot of teachers and, and directors and also artists and policy makers. It's one, maybe it's the, the, art, the artist one to, to, to bring, to realize. <clears throat> so, uh, which kind of space or environment we need to uh, implement this kind of activity. We need labs, we need art studios, we need uh, li um, libraries, that we, because it's very important to read. Re reading book is a, is a very, very, very important thing to do right now, especially if you, if you work a lot with technology. So <laughs> now uh, we, when we have several, here in Spain, in, in Tabacalera, in Donosti, we have several examples of hybrid spaces that are libraries and maker spaces at the same time, and uh, they, they are the perfect environment where teachers and students can have um, those informally moment, the, this uh, tool of, for conviviality, as uh, Ivan Illich used to, to define them, that can foster all this experimentation in, with time and spaces and that can foster inclusion and, and experimentation. So those spaces can be spaces for imagination in order to imagine possible ca methodologies, educations, uh, dynamics and, and relationship that can be useful in the, in the educational world. They are um, learning environment and they are space for political re reflection because um, teachers and students need spaces in order to um, criticize, to, to, to reflect and to propose political changes at, at all levels. And to do that you need to uh, allow yourself to, to, to experiment and share with others. And those spaces are, are, are very appropriate. So, and, the, and they are the right space also to uh, make an appropriation of the technology, what, it, what this means. Usually the technology uh, arrive at school from, from the top, from companies who have a special interest in selling devices and building methodology around devices. So uh, the teacher was the silly one who don't know technology and needs this uh, and need guide. Uh, this, is a, this, is, this is not right and this is not the reality. Uh, teachers and students need to have the power to, come to decide which the technology they use, to, they need to understand and to learn how to modify, to, to change technology in order to 
um, technology, a technology that is meaningful for them. So it's, uh, this is the, I think that the most important thing we, we need to do now because we, we can't uh, buy devices or platform or use uh, all those five technological companies which are selling us a lot of tools that are controlling us, they are getting our data, and they are um, defining pedagogies. Educators have to define pedagogies, and students have to define pedagogies, not technological companies. And that's it. Hello. Um, well, my name is uh, Alfredo, and I'm going to present the work we are doing in the Nodo Madrid. Uh, and first of all, I would like to share with you the first exercise we do with our students in this, in this project. So I'm going to ask my colleague for uh, the complicity. complicity. Take one, please. So with our, uh, with our students, we take a piece of paper and we write in one of the sides the word art. And in the other side, the word technology. As you may see, this is an object of two sides, two faces. And if you look to art, you can't look directly to technology. Uh, it's like even being the same object, knowledge, it seems to have two faces that look uh, in opposite directions. So what we try with these practices, let me, <laughs> is to, I thank you, thank you, uh, Felipe, is to twist, to, to experiment with the boundaries and the limits of these disciplines. So we twist and we put together both. That way, thank you. That way, we create a, a metaphor. It's a Moebius band that is a, a mathematical object that has only one face. Uh, so you can put your finger in the word art and go around to technology and come back and make your own itinerary. Uh, and uh, for do that, Felipe, please, again. <laughs> um, for do that, and put together these two things, we use an uh, tirita, band eight, because this uh, separation uh, between uh, art and science, it's like a wound that it's bleeding. They have cut, they have cut uh, uh, in, in two, this uh, intuition uh, from logic, science from, from art, and we feel this is something that is um, bleeding. So we do that as a metaphor to start the project and uh, thank you <laughs> and, and have like this spirit. And this is also a metaphor that is something very important because it's something that we use a lot to work with, with the students, uh, mixing art and education in Red Plania. So the second uh, metaphor is uh, about this picture. As you can see, from distance, it, it may seem something similar, uh, but there's a huge difference. Uh, that one is a plantation, so there's a lot of trees, of course, but uh, they are in a specific order. They have been uh, put there uh, for the decision of someone, and the, the most important thing is that uh, there's nothing in between these trees. So we look to uh, schools uh, as plantations where we have subjects uh, put there for, um, by someone for something, but uh, when, uh, when math finishes and starts literature and then physical education, but there's nothing in between. And uh, we try uh, to practice uh, new methodologies to create a forest in the school because it's a complex ecosystem where there are a lot of things in between these spaces uh, and they are alive. 
Um, things. So uh, how are we trying to, to do that? Well, we are testing several different methodologies, uh, but uh, the one I'm going to present today is uh, the one that has been designed uh, with Silvia Teixeira. Uh, in, she's an um, uh, engineer and artist. Uh, she worked at CERN in Geneva, in the European Spatial Agency, and in Media Lab. And uh, we've been working in a school in Madrid, in Pozuelo, that is called uh, Gerardo Diego. Um, and uh, we've been uh, testing the possibility to, uh, to transfer the Citizen Lab methodology to schools. Why? Because uh, Citizen Lab uh, uh, is a strategy linked to media labs that has two very important things to bring into our schools. One, the, prototype, uh, the prototyping processes, and the second, the citizen participation. Because uh, with open calls, um, uh, you can uh, ask a community about their interests, their uh, conflicts, uh, and you can involve them finding the new solutions. So uh, in, this, in, uh, in this kind of projects, there are people from territory, but also there are makers, there are specialists, there are artists, all working together in an horizontal hierarchy. Um, and yeah, it, it, it brings to the school the interdisciplinarity, the collaborative uh, learning, and also uh, they are like in the frame of constructivism and uh, active learning. Um, so we did uh, uh, two steps open call. The first one was uh, open call for teachers. Uh, they should present uh, proposals, ideas, intentions, at least in group of two different uh, uh, teachers from different uh, subjects. Um, and the goal is to, to twist, to experiment with, with both of the, these subjects. And we do that uh, because when Red Planea um, finished the collaboration with this center, uh, they still have the, the way to work because it's, uh, it's not the work of an external artist, but the, the things they know about their own subjects. So uh, this uh, may be a possibility to, to continue with these practices after the project leave the, the school. And then the second open call is for students, and uh, then we make two disruptions. The first one, uh, making intergenerational teams, because they apply as individuals, not, a, not as a classroom. Uh, so we have um, different grades, even it's open to university students, thanks to the collaboration of the Polytechnic University. So we create intergenerational uh, groups. And also, uh, the second disruption is that we don't uh, follow the timetable, and we try to, to work with another temporality, uh, at least in, in four hours uh, sessions, uh, to go deep in the experimentation with, uh, with the body. And uh, to share, uh, just for finishing, uh, the, some, some of the results, well, uh, to have like a concept uh, to cover all the, the proposals, we, we mm, take the, um, the walk as, uh, to walk in as uh, the concept for all the open calls. That way also we can involve the, the full body in the experience of learning and not uh, quietly and in silence in a, in a chair. So um, the, the results, and I'm going to ask you now uh, to have a band aid. Who has the music and technology? Music and technology? For you. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, uh, this uh, combining music and technology, we work with exercise of deep listening by Paulina Oliveros, also with um, uh, maps and folk music uh, and the technique of remix with Anthropoloops. Um, also, we used some devices designed by Playtronica, and they created their own interactive sound map uh, with recording that they have made in the Camino de Santiago. That was a trip that they did the, the week before our 
our prototyping process. Uh, the second one is the Gerson to Pozuelo, who has a geography, Latin and Greek for you. <laughs> um, uh, they twist this, uh, well, Gerson uh, is a, a city of Ukraine. Uh, the school was supposed to receive, to welcome uh, some students from this specific uh, city the weeks before the project uh, at the school. So uh, they studied the Roman roads, uh, to, to realize that every culture is migrant uh, from the beginning of the story and, and they interviewed people from U Ukraine and they create a psychocartography, a collage to use maps but not as a, uh, in a geographical way but uh, with emotional connections and different dimensions and now Gerson and Pozuelo are very close. Uh, the third is the Aureus Wolf. Thank you. Uh, who has a photo you? for you to make your <laughs> Moebius band? And well, th this combined uh, math and biology, uh, and they created stencils to, to put in the, in the phone and watch the, the world looking for this proportion. And in this same work, they collected some object to print it uh, with cyanotypia. That makes uh, well with some gimmicks and the last one uh, is a uh, leaf a mark Clara for you thank you uh, where the um, uh, combining the the teacher of uh, physical education and uh, technology and photography they experimented with different ways of transport and uh, the impact in the planet but also in the body and they experimented uh, the healthiest way that is walking but with a wheelchair and they discover the the difficulties uh, for these people to to go uh, in Pozuelo and they create inspired by Willy Dorner an artist that has a project that is called um, body in urban spaces uh, these ephemeral performances <laughs> to solve some of the problems in the street like uh, for for us to to allow to see how we need a ramp or chair or different or to, to hold um, in, in, in the <coughs> ground and these kind of things. So more or less uh, this, I'm going to uh, stop here. Um, well, I'm learning a lot uh, <laughs> about all your projects. So um, Felipe, are you the follower? Yes. So, yeah, thank you for so much. I'm also learning. I'm also afraid that we are not going to have a huge debate because I strongly agree with everything I'm listening. So maybe, Diego, later you can say something that I don't agree with. But <laughs> So my name is uh, Felipe. <clears throat> it's also a pleasure to be here in ISEA at, at the CCB because this is the house of the Meme Fest, which is uh, a very inspiring event that uh, I, I love. Uh, and it's really connected to what I'm uh, going to tell now. So I'm part of a small organization called SEMOS 98, which, as Clara said, uh, it's uh, working uh, with Planea. And one of the things we basically work with is uh, with the idea of uh, hacking mainstream narrative. So we know that we cannot deny the stories, the, the big stories told by mm, the big actors in the, in the media scene but we can uh, hack them, we can subder subvert them, and, and that's basically it. So to explain you the context of Proximo, which is one of the programs of, of Planea, I'm going to show you some pieces of content that you may know from, from, from the internet. So this is one. Uh, this uh, video went really, really viral, like one year ago. It was uh, a game uh, of two brothers. Uh, sister is recording the game, and basically they wanted to keep the balloon without touching the floor. So almost a half of a year later, uh, there was a, a very well-known streamer in Spain who is really well-known in Twitch. Uh, he's Ibai. You may know him because he's uh, now like a public figure. And they organized like a professional World Cup of this game. So this is just to show the connection from what is considered a viral video and something which happens later. And, and of course, it is not just something digital. So this is another video. It's a TikTok which also went very, very viral. Yeah. 
So it's a group of teenagers uh, making fun or dancing and making posters in Museo del Prado in Madrid. So this was really controversial and as you can imagine with the, all the levels of toxicity we have in some platforms like Twitter, some people when like teenagers are stupid, they are addicted to cell phones, that's why uh, they are doing this. But some other people were also saying they are having fun. What's wrong with that? Uh, now I'm going to show you something really personal. This is uh, the soundtrack I have at home almost 24-7. This is from the movie Encanto from Disney. So Mike, I have two kids, uh, five and eight years old. They are listening all the time to the soundtrack. I almost know all the lyrics now. Uh, but something interesting that happened connected to that is that uh, they really uh, took care of the representation. And instead, uh, in, in terms of Afro representation, they did something well, even if it's a, a mainstream agent, which was to hire someone to work specifically on that. So how to represent the Colombian communities properly and not just uh, in a way that people don't feel represented or, or the, the communities that usually are not represented. So what we see is that mainstream is not that homogeneous. It's not always that big monster, which is untouchable, but it's something that we can uh, somehow hack. Another thing that is part of the context it's how some internet jokes jump into the street this is a very explicit and clear example but we have been gathering posters in in demonstrations the 8th of march you know the the women's day which is one of the 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 major demonstrations in spain in, in the last years so there are many jokes which are inside jokes from the internet which are now posters like time news woman rage against the machism Girls ju just want to have fundamental rights, or without Hermione, we, we wouldn't have you know, Harry Potter because. So the way we look at technology on, as a medium, as Susanna said before, is that sometimes you, you have uh, problematic representations, but some other times there are tools, trendy tools that can be used politically or socially. Like for example, TikTok. So this is just a way to show a decolonial or anti-racist message in 15 seconds. This is happening a lot on TikTok. So of course on TikTok you have uh, apparently silly dances, apparently silly uh, music, but you also have a lot of political context, content. So uh, with that, all of that as a context, one of the things we try to do is in an eight weeks uh, program with seven uh, schools and high schools in Andalusia is to work with the students and teachers on how to use these languages. Because uh, in the end, that's something I liked a lot from what you said, Susana. Uh, technology is not neutral, technology is a medium, and the most important thing is the languages they are using. So how they tell stories with this. So I'm going to show you three examples of this program, which was basically uh, listening and watching what they consume. That was the first step we did in, in the classroom. Uh, working with teachers on how to connect their curriculum needs with what the students consume. And then designing and co-designing with them an activity, which was to produce a meme or to produce a series of TikToks, etc. So I'm going to show you three examples. So this was connected to Greek classical history, how to criticize uh, sexism and machismo in Zeus. And this was one of, one of the memes from the students. Uh, there was another uh, school from uh, uh, Cordoba building a dictionary of uh, local words, because as you know, in Spain, uh, it is considered correct, the correct Spanish is mostly the one which is spoken by the people from Madrid, but we have mm, a lot of diversity in terms of languages in all the regions, and the South is the same, so they have particular words, and they made a dictionary using TikTok to define every single word. Uh, and finally, this was in Seville, in an abandoned park which is close to the school. They wanted to make a campaign uh, directed to the city council to denounce the situation of, of the park but also to, to, to uh, try to use it uh, 
better. So they impersonate trees from the from the park using TikTok because this is a filter and also using real pictures. So we did an online event to have them, the students, because that was also important for us to have them to um, show them that it, this was not just homework, that they, this has a real effect on us as adults. So they were presenting their own, uh, their own works. And just to finalize this and to throw this to the, to the debate, um, yeah, the first idea is uh, that maybe we should stop distinguishing between the digital and non-digital, because as we saw, what went viral was a game, a game played by two brothers or or some people dancing, like moving their bodies in the museum. There is a video there recording, but yeah, maybe digital, non-digital, it's not that important. The second idea is that, yeah, we need to look at what students are watching. Uh, we cannot deny that. They are using TikTok. I know there are many dark stories about how algorithms are affecting our economy of attention. Now uh, There are many issues there, toxicity, uh, bullying, uh, racism, sexism, all the problems we know, but we need to look at them because that's the language they speak and we need to learn that language. And, and the last idea probably is that even though there is a lot of dark sites on the internet, because it's a huge place, we can try to take some of the nice things that some people are trying to do uh, and they are trying to introduce in the classroom. So I'm sure that we already heard a lot and I know this is optimistic, not really pessimistic, but uh, I have learned that there are many people trying to do good things within the classroom, even though there are challenges, etc. Hello, everybody. Thank you for staying here and enjoying. I hope you find interesting the, the, the table. Um, and thank you for inviting me, of course, to, to the presentation. Uh, I would like to present a project that I've been developing inside the Red Planea in the Valencian North. Uh, it is called Playing with Data, Art and Social Networks. So basically what happened is like since last two years, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Clara, uh, the Red Planea Valencian North start to develop some kind of toolkits like a box with uh, uh, contents of educational contents and resources that it been sent to different schools around our community uh, in order to uh, provide uh, resources for the teacher to teacher to implement uh, in the classroom to the student no? so they invite me to develop one of these kits one of these uh, resources and I developed this project that I want to, to explain to explain here. So the context uh, is like, okay, could you, because I am, uh, as an artist, I've been working for more than 20 years in the field of uh, new media, art and technology, and I did many workshops to a student related with my art practices uh, that I, of course, shared with Clara with Clara because we're working together as an art uh, artist. No? Uh, so in this context, uh, in the last project that we are developing, we are talking and we are researching about data, about personal data, about digital traces, and about the, the hybrid life that everybody has, that all our activities uh, that we do in the physical space has a representation, are, sh are, are saved are saved in the in the digital space somehow no? so our digital tra trace like uh, if i open the phone and i search or maybe if i move somewhere if i take a photo everything is being recorded and saved in the big data all of us we are we are uh, uh, feeling the the, the 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 big data with all our, all our activities like everybody knows no so uh, what I was thinking is, okay, could we have a critical analyze of data, data sense society? So we could understand like data sense society as a, as a metaphor to understand the, 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 the moment where we are living, no? that everything is mediated by data. Um, so, uh, of course, we could think, uh, we have to reflect about the tyranny, the tyranny of algorithms, like uh, all this data is uh, 
after register is processor. All this data is processed by algorithms, by a very powerful algorithm, every time more like machine learning, uh, very sophisticated algorithms that somehow it is uh, in, a, in, a deep, uh, in a deep way controlling our societies. And every time more, it says that I, as a stock market, for example, uh, it, there is some kind of algorithms that they automatically uh, take a lot of decisions that change uh, our life because algorithms prediction are very powerful and affecting our society in a very deep um, black manner that not many people know how they really are working because uh, deep learning is a black box that takes a lot of decisions that nobody knows exactly how inside is working. So of course this is a very, this is context is very deep and very complex. So I am trying to do just a little bit of lines, you know, in order to summarize what I try to implement in this toolkit for the classrooms, no? so somehow. So what I did, no? so the project was called Playing with Data, a creative toolkit, as I said before. No? So the idea was to develop a project-based learning. No? So the idea is like the student will develop a, a, a set of 12 activities that they will learn through the process of experimenting and playing with this with all these activities, no? That's more or less the, the idea. Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, something happened with that. Okay, so um, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, whole, the whole educational kit somehow is divided in three main topics. The first one is digital data and um, big data, no? the, the idea of how to introduce this concept in the school no? and, and related with how the digital trades are safe. Um, for example, one of the activities that they could do is to download the, what Google has, all the information that Google has of Facebook or Instagram has about the student. No? So they, they, they download all this information the, and then they could do some kind of analysis, analysis um, playing with all this information that big companies already have of them. And the other one is the digital double, the idea of how big companies make a double of us uh, in, uh, according, with the, with the, according with the digital data that they, the, that they have, that they collect with us, no? how they do this, the, and how they process, and how we can imagine uh, our digital double. double. And the last one is the algorithm, no? the, as I said before, the algorithm thir the tyranny, how machine learning and algorithms are, are, are working somehow and, and what can we do with that. Um, as I said before, we, I developed 12 activities. Some of them are uh, developed to, to do inside the classroom, some of them to be outside of the classroom, some of them don't use technology as digital technology, it's just drawing or thinking or uh, playing with different tools and objects, and some of them are also use computers and a little bit of technology, but any of them um, uh, uh, any of them use uh, programming languages as as, uh, as, as we know, so the students don't have to, to program, but they use technology in, a, in, a, in such a way that maybe I will show you some of these examples. Uh, of, uh, and another uh, uh, transversal activity that, that, that they have is a magazine to play, we call I am, I, I am my, da my Data, it's a magazine, a printed magazine magazine that they uh, have to fill, they have to, to play with it, they have to complete the magazine uh, during the process of the developing the 12 activities. So um, each one of the 12 activities has um, something that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, represented in the magazine. So it's, uh, and the other is that each class uh, ha is invited to create an Instagram user in order to share with the other in the, in the community, to create a little community with all the uh, um, students, uh, with all the centers and the classroom to share all of them, the resources of the activities that they, 
that they have been developing. Sharing with the hashtag, jugando with that, also playing with data. No? So this is the hashtag that we could find and then we could share. No? Uh, this is an example of the toolkit. Uh, on the right side, you have the box that the schools are uh, uh, get it, no? when they, they start in the project. They have to say that uh, the project starts in January this year and they finish just in May, uh, so uh, just uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, in this first, uh, in this first uh, uh, project experience, no? uh, the two, uh, 18, uh, 18 uh, um, college uh, from the Alicante, Valencia, and Castellón participated in the uh, in the experience with more than 1,500 students because each college or each school. Um, uh, some of them is just with one, with uh, participate with one classroom, but but more ma many of them participate with different classrooms, like some of them four or five classrooms. So at the end, the, one of the interesting things for this methodology of toolkits is like the scalability, because you can uh, reach uh, a, a, a big number of students no, with this. Uh, with these resources, so on the on the left on the left you can see the uh, samples of the magazine. No? So inside the book, in, inside the, the the box, there is a lot of materials like cards. Like uh, uh, I will show you a little of the samples, and they have also a printed guide for for the for teachers. No, I. I, so in the printed guide, the teacher has uh, all the proposal with the, uh, the context that I explained before um, and the proposal for the activities that they have to, to do. They, they, they could develop in the school, but of course they are free to develop the, the, the activities in the way they best consider in the, in the classroom because they are the ones who have the relationship with the kids, with the student. What I do is to write a proposal um, or say, okay, you might or you could do this in this way. This is my suggestion, but you, of course, could adapt the, as, you, as you prefer. So, for example, the first uh, activities that they could do in the classroom is to, to do an encuesta. How do you say encuesta? Question. Questionnaire? Survey. A, a survey, exactly. The, uh, uh, there is a survey that students could answer answer with a lot of questions, as it was 30 questions. Uh, and then with all these uh, surveys, they play with them in order to represent with graphics elements, all this data and so on. And at the end, they could do in, in this board, they could share the results between them and the, and the, and the student. So this is another some of the samples of the of the graphics that they made with the survey. No, so the question are very. Uh, some of them are very related with data, and some of them are not really di di directly related with data. But of course, they have a, a reflection and critical and critical analysis of how we use data. So, so for example, this one is the, 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 on, the on the yellow one. Uh, it's like if your if your phone, if your mobile phone has uh, parental control, and you can see that 95% is no and uh, five percent is yes. No, it's interesting to see, like uh, in the, as I said before, in the eighteen schools. No, this is <laughs> general. Nobody uses the, the parental control, and we are talking that we are playing with kids who for twelve, thirteen years old, and so on. So it's something to think about. No. Um, and the other one is how long do you use the mobile phone every day? No, and you can see, like in this case, five hours per day. Five hours per day, students use mobile phones. No? So it's something also that I invite to, to think about. No? Another four person is six hours, seven hours, eight hours, nine. Uh, no, so it's very, it's hard. No? So uh, with all this, they could, as, as I said before, when they have the graphics and then in the, in, the, in, the, in the magazine, they could paste the graphics in the magazine. And in, in this is one of the pages of the magazine where they have some tests. Like, uh, for example, this is an introduction of data science. What is data science? And, and they have also some memes no? so in order to make this uh, graphical and interesting way of, I think, to make the, the, the magazine. No? Um, another activity that they had is uh, I make this uh, a card game. 
it's a card game with uh, Instagram. Uh, the idea is to analyze the Instagram algorithm through the through a playing card with through through, through the cards, no. Um, so students are invited to play uh, with cards in the same way that they uh, interact with uh, uh, Instagram. In order to uh, the idea is that they could uh, through this they could understand understand how uh, Instagram algorithms algorithms is designed in order to attract the attention of the student and to create the needs of likes and posts and to interact with the system and, and, and cap the, cap capture the attention of, of the student in, the, in these social networks. No? And uh, after they do that, uh, they, are they, they are invited to create, uh, to draw down uh, an, uh, a schematic representation of the algorithms for Instagram algorithms. No? And also another way of, 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 to, of playing with this card is to, to, to change the algorithms. Now the students are invited to play with the Instagram in a different manner. It's like, okay, if you have the possibility to reprogram Instagram, how could you do it? How do you think it could be done? No? Uh, so this is why we use the, the, the cards as a medium for that. And uh, this is an example of one of the activities that they use technology. We use um, uh, Teachable Machine, it's from Google. It's a very nice graphical interface for program for, 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 for program machine learning algorithms for computer vision. It's very powerful, it's amazing, and it's very, very simple because it's just graphics that you, you know, so I don't know you use it yet, but it's very interesting. I have to, yes, sorry. Yes, I have to finish, but basically in these activities, what they do, <laughs> sorry, what they do is to, to, um, to try uh, to, to train the neural network to to recognize your face, and then you uh, there is a, in the in the kit in the, in the box there is uh, some painting for the for the for the makeup, and they they make up themselves in order to um, to 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 um, to play to hack the algorithms in order to don't recognize the face of the people who are there. Uh, well, there is more activities like this is a robot the graphic uh, uh, they, they have to draw to draw the face of the pe uh, of somebody according with the browser history so we give them a browser history of different profile users and they have to draw the digital representation of this person so is how powerful is the browser history of everybody of each of us in order to analyze and represent the, the us so in, uh, this is another one I have to play uh, to, to go faster and I'm finished. This is my last. Uh, um, so basically, uh, the, the methodology was like I did four training sessions of two hours to the teachers. It was so, uh, uh, and then the teacher implemented everything uh, in the school with the student, with all the activities and so on. And, and that's it. No? Okay. Sorry for if I speak so much. <laughs> so, uh, I think we don't have time for, for questions, right? So we, we can take questions in outside or during the lunch or whenever you find us around the conference, maybe. <laughs> yeah. We can have a conversation in a more informal context. So we leave the, the scene. Thank you.